Hello, everyone. Today, I'm interviewing Mia Reeves. Mia is a CPA and a managing partner at Reeves Accounting Services. Above all, she's a successful entrepreneur. She traces her success to when she was 12 years old, when her mother asked her to read two books, Think and Grow, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Maybe a lot of you heard of those books. At age 15, she started her bakery business and employed 10 staffs, mostly her friends. She joined college and she started two clubs of which one of them earned the Chancellor Legacy Award and she started her career at the Big Four. Mia believes there are only 24 hours a day, the same amount of time that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have. It's all about how you use those 24 hours a day to be a successful person. And we're gonna use every single minute of this interview to take advantage of Mia's presence. Once again, Mia, thank you so much for accepting to talk to me, farhatlectures.com. Now, my viewers are mostly accounting students, CPA candidate, or people who are starting their career. So please keep that in mind. My first question to you is, why did you choose to study accounting? Yeah, so um, I knew that I wanted to have a business. I knew I wanted to go to business school. So it's a no-brainer for me. And then when I came, you know, when I joined business school and at TCU, I went to Texas Christian University. Um, it's in, it's in a Christian school and in Texas. So um, after my second year, I, I could choose a major in the business school, right? So there's just so many majors like entrepreneurship, marketing, accounting, uh, finance, real estate. And I just picked accounting because first, I think it was the easiest for me. I think I got very good grades and I just got it. So second reason, I think accounting, I, mean, I was going to choose entrepreneurship, but I thought, well, accounting is really the foundation to a good business. I can have a business that can employ people, but if I don't understand the numbers, um, I can't run a business. So I just picked accounting because it helps, really helps me understand how everything works in a business. Excellent, excellent. So that's good. So you studied accounting because you already have an entrepreneurial mindset. And that makes sense. If you have an entrepreneurial mindset, you want to understand the numbers, the income statement, the balance sheet, how all fits together. Makes perfect sense. Now, why did you go for specifically for your CPA certification? I um, got a job offer at Deloitte and I knew that it was a requirement to be a, to be a, a CPA. And well, it was not actually a requirement, but if I became a CPA, then I would have a higher raise and um, just- More advancement. reputation, yeah, more advancement anyways. Um, so when I was a Deloitte, I was, you know, I was being, I still wanted to have a business, but I was like, well, I'm just going to work for a few years and see how it goes, right? But yes. Deloitte offered me, um, you know, free CPA, um, you know, I think it's a few thousand dollars to study. Yes, I believe the big four uses Becker. I believe is it was it Becker? Uh, Becker, yeah. Becker, Becker CPA review. Absolutely, yeah. basically all the big four. So, how did you study? Because again, a lot of people who are listening now, they're most likely studying for the exam. So, could you give them some tips how to study for the exam? Especially, I'm assuming that you were working at the same time. I was actually not working. Um, I okay. was in school. So I it was doing- Oh, that's even better. Go ahead. Math, yeah, Master of Accounting. So I kind of took a gap year, you know, because I got a job offer before I, they got offered me a job a year before I had to really start working. So okay. I came to school for a master's degree. Um, I came right into your, your channel and kind of use your, your, your methods as well. I used Becker too, because it was free for me. And, um, I think when, how long did they spend? I think I spent six months studying for it and I passed four parts of the CT exam in six months. So uh, from January until, until June. Um, excellent, excellent. So, so as Mia stated, it's very important if you are giving that opportunity, if you are hired six months ahead and you're giving that chance, mm -hmm. make sure, right Mia? Because once you, once you start working, you're gonna have yeah. a lot of pressure. So make sure you pass those four parts, take advantage. That's gonna be your, not your full-time job, you're supposed to be studying more than eight hours a day. So you're supposed to be studying okay. 10 hours a day if you want to finish. So, so they're giving you that advantage. Make sure you take advantage of it, just like Mia did. And also, Mia, as a, when you start your career in public accounting, it's very challenging. What would you share with early career aspirants? What, what, what advice would you give them? What advice you would want to hear, knowing what you know now, you wish you got when you started your career in accounting? In yeah, public accounting specifically. Um, 
I, I totally agree with you 100%. Um, study for the CPA exam and pass it before you get actually start because um, at Big Four, like there's no way you work less than 60 hours a week, right? So um, yeah, so I yeah, I spent eight to 10 hours a day studying for CPA exam and, and even two months before I started, I, I, I passed four cards so I could celebrate and just spend two months with summer just enjoying myself. So that's the first advice, um, trying to study beforehand. At Big Four, I think career advice, um, just be open-minded because, you know, everybody know everybody thinks, well, you're going to work so hard. You're going to have to um, deal with politics and, you know, like different teams have different work environments, right? So be open-minded and have a, pos a positive attitude. That's very important, especially if you work with a team and you see the same people 10 hours, 12 hours a day, and probably work it's going to get boring and stressful so having a positive attitude and thinking I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the job done and to to create a positive working environment that's very helpful absolutely absolutely and as an entrepreneur I always tell my students that when you go into public accounting it's not a job it's not even a career you have to think like an entrepreneur what could you mm -hmm. say about this is that is this a true statement yeah it's true because um a very high chance that you know your first day in the job well not really your first day your first month in the job your senior will tell you to go talk to the controller and get this information and that information and by then you're like okay i don't know what i'm doing yet it's like how are you expecting me to talk to the controller and pretend that i know what i'm doing right so i i didn't really pretend that i knew what i was doing but definitely think that you have to think and you have to be able to deal with different situations, different people. It's very, it's very much like an entrepreneurship, an entrepreneur. What That's would you say the most important skills you would need? What would, would, would you advise students to uh, nurture as they mm -hmm. are starting their career or they're still in college to be successful yeah. in public accounting? Being able to find the answer fast. So you might not have the answer to the question right away, but you have to be able to look into, I think they have, Big Four have something, or Deloitte has something called Deloitte Library. Like you have to be able to research the information. Um, if you can't find the answer, if you can't look for the information, then, then try to Google or, you know, try your best to find the answer. If you can't, then ask for help um, fast <laughs> because you can't spend an hour looking for an answer, right? Maybe 30, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, the research skill, you know, being able to find a solution to the answer, even though you're not sure, very important. And very important to understand that sometimes there's not, there's no straight answer. It's not like your oh, yeah. college. It's exactly. always a gray area where you have to interpret the information and apply it. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Absolutely. Find the answer and then explain, interpret the information to, to the client who probably has 10 years of accounting experience, 10 more years than you do. I see. I see. Absolutely. So, so basically... It's not like college where you can go ask the professor and there's an answer. So that's the that's the mindset. You have to look for the answer. You have to learn how to look for the answers. Absolutely. And th that's that's the that's the skill that you will need. Uh, mm -hmm. One, I agree with you 100%. So people who are listening, it's not like your college textbook. There's a solution for the problem. You're going to have to find the solution for the problem. And it may not be the only solution, but you have to choose the best solution. And obviously communicate the solution to the interested parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And how did you move from the big four to being on your own? Could you tell us about, you know, the mind thought, the fears, the challenges, because many students at the end of the day, they want to be their own boss. Actually, when you, as, as I said, in a CPA firm, you should be thinking like your your own boss, but when you move out, it's a scary. So could you tell us about that process, please? Yeah, so um, I worked at Big Four for a few years and it was just, you know, one busy season after the other and I got tired. Um, and then to the point where I, I used to be very excited going to work, but I got to the point I was kind of burned, like burned, out, burned out a little bit. And I was just looking forward to the weekend, meaning, you know, Sunday. And then the next day, it's Monday, we had to work long hours again. And I was, I was like really sad. I was not, not like too excited anymore. Um, and, and I know that I've always wanted to have my own business. Um, so I've been, you know, for the last maybe a, a six or seven months before I actually quit Deloitte, I was just really thinking about what I really, what do I really wanted to do? Where's my childhood dream? And it's definitely not being, staying for 10 more years, becoming the partner because I can't work like this 
um, anymore, right? Um, it, yes. may, it can, but I need to control my time and I have no control there. So I, um, I looked for ideas and then I read into a few coaching programs that okay. taught people how to start their own accounting businesses. So I just like bought a few programs and quit my job and, and, and started. Now, after the timeline of when I quit my job until I completely like started my business, I mean, it took me a few months. So I had to do contracting work and took clients that paid me really low just to learn how to do things. So I would say it took me a few months, but I officially started my business 100% um, in February, 2018. So it was- yeah, Congratulations. I mean, you have a very successful practice. I mean, as, as a business owner, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, again, you, 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 you will need different skill sets. For example, marketing your business, uh, search engine optimization, uh, advertising. Could you tell us how do you do that? I know it's, it's difficult for students to understand this, but they need to understand as an entrepreneur, it's not only about accounting, it's about other skills. Could you please, could you please talk to that? Yeah, so that's where my, my coaching programs were very helpful. Um, I'm also a big fan of Tony Robbins, you know, Russell Johnson, those people, Rachel Hollis, those um, people that, like marketing entrepreneur gurus, right? So I took their courses too, and I kind of learned from, from their experience. Um, so yeah, and, and then also um, Andrew Argue, I don't know if you, you've heard about him, I bought his program. So yes, much, a bunch of different programs. I Google, got you to research, read books. Um, it's the combination of different things. Also made friends with other accountants that started their their business Absolutely. a few years before I did, and now they have you know half a million million dollar business. Back then, they were my mentors too. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, just 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 it's a huge learning curve, but I'm I was very appreciative of what Deloitte taught me back then. Yes. Um, you know, the ability to 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 find the answer, to interpret the information, to improvise, you know, to implement what I learned into practice. Those skills that I couldn't have without uh, without joining Deloitte in the first place. Absolutely. So it's part Deloitte, part of it, you, you took some uh, p- uh, coaching classes, coaching your own research. And the most important thing you mentioned is networking, get, networking. getting in touch with other accounting. Yes, networking is extremely important, uh, obviously. Uh, what could you tell us about your practice today? What do you do? Um, is there a specific business you focus on or do you do everything? What could you tell us about that? So I've grown my business from just having a few clients to currently we have over 150 clients. And you said 450. Oh, 150. 150. <laughs> Hopefully 450, which is 150 for now. I, I have no <laughs> doubt you will get there. <laughs> we have a team of, um, of five. So we have um, three full-time and two part-time. We are um, kind of looking for two uh, two more full-time oh, yeah. uh, accountants. Two more full-time. Is it mm-hmm. staff accounting? Is it... Uh... Is it the clerk? Full-time, we're looking for a full-time staff accountant and a full-time tax senior. So, if tax, specifically senior, tax. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to make sure I, I mention this uh, up front. So yeah. is it in Texas? Um, in Texas, but the positions are fully remote for now. So I don't even know if I'm going to get back to my office again. I'm kind of, I've, I've learned how to work remote and my employees are remote for now. So we'll Excellent. see, but currently they're remote positions. Um, but yeah, so we, we primarily help clients with tax planning and, um, and accounting, you know, CFO services for their business. Now, now we do tax prep and bookkeeping as well, but I feel like tax planning and CFO services are our core offerings because they can really help people grow their businesses and save more in taxes. Um, we save people anywhere from 15, 25 to 400,000 a year in taxes. I see. Interesting. So tax planning is really a service that could provide value. Now, after we save more in taxes, we can come with keeping, accounting, CFOs to kind of double, triple their revenue and their profit. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. I mean, wh- when it comes to taxes, do you value someone with an EA or they, do they have to be a CPA? And if, 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 if people who are listening, where should they go? I'm going to put your company's list in the description, but is there a place where they would go to look at, you know, the job requirements? Is there a, a specific place? They can go to my website. In my okay. website there's a tab called career and they can just apply directly there. Um, I, I do value the EA in the in the CPA certifications, either one's fine. And if the staff okay. account position, I don't require um, the candidate to have any um, certification yet. And they can they can study and they can get certified when they're working with okay. me. I would prefer them to pass the, the exam even before they start working, right? So yes, of course. They, they, they run into the situation where they have to work and then block out five or six hours at night studying. It's 
very it's draining that it's yeah it's stressful for it's everyone very stressful and it can take years to pass the cp exam not a few months um, but anyways yeah so um you can apply to to the website directly absolutely is there anything else you would like you would like to add uh, to our viewers anything anything you would like to share i would say definitely try to pass the cpa exam um or you know have the cpa with the ea certification because if you just have that license you know the certification to show um your boss or, you know start a business show your prospective clients and it shows that you have the the strength the determination to pass the exam because the exams are very hard to, to study for and to pass but you know a cpa exam it took me eight or ten hours a day pretty much every day during the week six months to, to pass the exam. And I'm, I'm not a very fast learner maybe, but it's very hard to pass the exam. So try your best to get certified, um, means a lot. You mentioned something, you're not a fast learner and uh, people who are listening, yes. You, you don't have to be, if, even if you're not a fast learner, it doesn't mean you're not successful. That doesn't determine yeah. your success as, you know, I'm not a fast learner myself as well. It's about persistence and just keep going, persistence, and you will get there. Absolutely. I agree 100% with that. Yeah, because good. a lot of people, they said, I'm not a fast learner. You know, I'm not a CPA material. It has nothing to do. As long as you have the attitude to succeed, to get your feet wet, to get your hands dirty, you will succeed in life. Oh, yeah, we exactly. Because when I look for someone, even for my company, I'm not looking for someone that is a straight A student. I'm looking for someone, even you, you maybe more than 3.5 GPA, right? But you need to be able to, to think and find the solution and ask for help and, um, you know, have great customer service skills. So it's a combination of different things. It's not just the GPA. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And again, it's to find the solution and fast ask questions last, right? You should you should not ask questions every time. You should ask ask questions. Ask you questions. Ask you, so right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Mia, thank you so much for this time for for joining us for Four Hat Lectures. We appreciate your time, and uh, people who are listening, check check out uh, Mia Mia's website. Check out her career link, and I wish you all the success, Mia. And hopefully, next time we interview, you'll have not 450 above a thousand client. We'll see you soon. Thank you. We'll see you soon.